Thanks, Jason. Well, the new year is a perfect time <laughs> to start making smart what was decisions. That? Pop I don't know. Yeah, Pop I like that. <laughs> well, the new year is a perfect time to start making some smart decisions when it comes to your money. David Hall is CEO and owner of our sponsor, Hall Financial. Thank you for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. First of all, you were supposed to be here in December, but I know. you had a blessing that showed up on yeah. the day that you were supposed to be here. Your wife had a baby. Yeah, we had a baby boy, oh. so it was exciting, and uh, he's uh, 26 days old today, oh, so we're so excited. Oh, exciting. Yeah. so yeah. exciting. Thank Congratulations you. Thank to you. you. So yeah. let's start with that. So everyone has just gone through a lot of gift buying, okay? So how can people tackle that credit card debt? Because those bills should be yeah. coming in right about now. Well, I think the key is to be proactive, you know, and I think that if you're looking at, you know, your own personal situation, you know if you're going to be able to pay your balances on time or not, and if you've got it under control. So many times, you know, it can get away from us a little bit. We've got higher balances than maybe we can pay. So the key with a credit card is it's made for convenience. Right. So it's not made for you to have balances and to be paying high interest debt every month. So if you have equity in your home, and your balances have gotten away from you, potentially looking at consolidating can make sense. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. We get a lot of calls and we kind of sort that out for people, but just be proactive about it. Don't let it linger and the next thing you know it's May and you've made thousands of dollars in interest payments without being proactive about it. So I think you got to be on top of it, consult with an expert and just make sure you're in a good position. No, I like that you said that because I think what happens is a lot of people think they have it under control. Yeah. One month goes by. Well, and we get in denial, by. you know, yes. so that happens. We get in denial and we think, oh, well, we're going to be able to pay this. Well, how and with what? And so you just really got to be realistic about your situation so you're not wasting money on high interest debt. That's right. That's right. So another smart move that you suggest for people who are thinking about buying a home is to shop now and not to wait until spring. Why is that? Well, I think it's like, you know, smart investors typically go the opposite direction that everybody else is going. And I think it's the same thing with homeowners. So we know in Michigan that in April and May, lots of people are gonna come out of the woodwork for that spring buying season. It happens every year where the big buying season in Michigan is sort of that April to August kind of a time frame. So for folks that know that they wanna buy, they can get out there right now and sort of avoid those bidding wars. Not a lot of people wanna shop for a home in January and February. It's snowing outside today on the way down. But if you, want, if you can get out and do that, you sort of get ahead of the curve and you might be bidding on the same house today without competition that in April or May may have multiple multiple bids, get a better deal, get ahead of the curve. We know that, you know, in Michigan, open houses on Sunday when it's 26 degrees isn't as much fun as it is in June when it's 70, but that's part of getting ahead and going where the herd isn't, you know, because everybody else is going to be out there in the summertime. So we've just found over the years, myself and our firm, is that when people are shopping, when other people aren't, they typically get a better deal and or have more selection. Okay, and I like how you said that. So investors do the opposite of what the trend is. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So speaking of trends, there's a lot of uncertainty about the upcoming year. What should people expect for 2020? What are some good advice that you could give? Well, is it, you know, I wish I could give advice on a lot of things, but I know mortgages, so let's stick to mm -hmm. that, right? So <laughs> mortgage interest rates typically in an election year are going to stay low. You know, the, the incumbent doesn't want to see the market get away from them, and then they've got opportunity to be criticized based on what's going on with rates. So, you know, and typically this happens, is that in an election year, mortgage interest rates will stay relatively low. Now, will they stay as low as they are today? I don't know about that. That. I think they might rise a little bit, but I think we're looking at another good year in 2020 for mortgage interest rates. That's what the experts are all saying if you read uh, what people are talking about. So, you know, you never know, and, and any event can change the course of mortgage interest rates, which is why if it makes sense for you now, locking in makes a yes. lot of sense to a low mortgage interest rate because they still are historically low. But we, we see that it's going to be a good year for mortgage interest rates, you know, all things considered. And then, you know, who knows what happens after the election. But typically, Typically, that's what happens, and that's kind of what we're going on right now. Right, and take advantage of it yeah. if you can. So what other smart money moves should people be considering right now? Well, I think that we hit on a couple of the big ones. Like, if you're going to shop, get out and do it now. If you've got credit card debt, take a look at it. The other thing is that if your mortgage interest rate right now is at 
over 4%, you can maybe take a look at does it make sense for me to refinance? That would be a good rule of thumb right now. I would say the other thing too is for folks that maybe they've had some things with their credit, it's never too late to get your credit in better shape. And I always put it this way, if your score is 760 or higher, you are in the very top bucket. So if you're below 760, there's always work you can do to get your credit in better shape so that you're paying cheaper interest on everything that you're buying. I think that's very important for people to know. So whether your score is 580 or 620 or 640 or 710 or whatever it is, talk to somebody who's an expert about how can I get my credit score just a little higher? Absolutely. It's like a game and it's really exciting. You know this and is you want to win it. You that's a game win it. you want to win. And it'll save you a lot of money when yeah, you're winning that's it. That's right. All right. To learn